Consider the following problem. Blue Ridge is a manufacturer of hot tubs and at the moment they are planning production of two products, Aqua Spas and Hydroluxus, and they would like to decide how many units of those products to produce to maximize the total profit. Now there are resource restrictions uh, on the production and they are given on the right and in the table and you see uh, so the three limited resources are pumps we have one pump we need one pump for each aqua spa one for each hydrolux and we have only 200 pumps available we need labor it uh, each aqua spa requires nine hours of work and each hydrolux requires six hours of work and we have 1566 labor hours available and the same thing uh, tubing we need some tubing for each of those products we we need 12 feet of tubing for aqua spa for each aqua spa and 16 feet, feet of tubing for each hydrolux and we have 2880 feet of tubes and we also know the unit profit for each aqua spa we produce and we sell um, we, we will get 350 dollars and for each hydrolux we'll get 300 dollars so there is a number of assumptions here first of all there must be many resources but um, that, that are used in the production but probably many of them are not uh, limiting the production so they have not been included they are not included in this model second we're assuming the demand is is large enough it's sufficient for selling all the products we will produce and so we're assuming if we produce an aqua spa we will sell it and we'll get the profit 350 dollars and the same with hydroluxes we will sell everything we produce right these are the assumptions on the in the model so here we will use a linear programming model and a linear programming model consists of four main components and these are decision variables an objective function something that will optimize maximize or minimize constraints and bounds a special type of constraints um, which are bounds on variables lower bounds upper bounds so let's define them one by one. First of all, decision variables. What do we want to decide? We want to decide the number of units of product one, aqua spa, and the number of units of product two, hydrolux. So we can define decision variables as x1. We can say this is number of aqua spa hot tubs to produce. And we can say x2 that's number of hydro lux hot tubs to produce right one could use any symbols but we'll be using x just for simplicity um, now if these are the decision variables what do we want to achieve what do we want to get um, as high as possible or as low as possible in this case we want to maximize the total profit right if you look at the the definition of the problem they want to decide the number of aqua spine hydrolux that will give us maximum possible profit now how do we calculate profit here we're getting 350 dollars for every aqua spa and we're getting 300 dollars for every hydrolux and the number of units that will produce we don't know how much that will be but the symbols that we're using the variables are x1 x2 that define the number of units for each aqua spa for, for aqua spas and hydroluxes so we can compute our total profit as 350 dollars times the number of aqua spas that will give us the profit from all aqua spas and we'll add to that the profit from all hydroluxes which is 300 x two right and we want to maximize this so we'll say max in front of this function to indicate we want as large as possible value of this function and one more thing it's a good idea to write here is to to write in parentheses uh, uh, the meaning of this function right now we know this is profit total profit that we're maximizing but later on when you look at it you might ask yourself well, what what is this function what was the meaning of 350 so it's a good idea to write a comment here to write this is total profit and uh, we might even say to be explicit in dollars that this total profit is measured in dollars 
okay we have the objective we need the constraints right we need to put to write mathematically the restrictions on the decision variables and these restrictions we have three resource restrictions so what we will usually say is we will say maximize this function by uh, subject to the following constraints and so for subject to we'll write s t which means subject to the following constraints and these constraints are well we don't want to use too many pumps so let's compute how many pumps we will be using well we will be using one pump for every aqua spa so one times x1 or we can just write x1 pumps for aqua spas and we will use x2 pumps for hydroluxes so x1 plus x2 is the total number of pumps right it's a total number of hot tubs so it's also a total number of pumps in this context that we will use and um, and we don't want this to be more than 200 so we're saying less than or equal to the number of available pumps which is 200 again let's write a comment here this is pumps notice that writing pumps here is enough to say what it is and it what units we, we measure it right we're just counting the pumps that was the first constraint the second constraint will be about labor so we want to say how many labor hours are we using well we're using nine labor hours for every aqua spa that we produce so all the labor that is used for aqua spas will be nine times x1 and then we'll we'll add to that six times x2 which is the labor time used for hydroluxes right so this function 9x1 plus 6x2 means the total labor time measured in hours that is used right and we want to say less than or equal to 1566 which is which is the labor time available and i'll say here labor hours to indicate this constraint is about labor and we measure labor in hours notice that writing this is important because labor could be measured in other units like days or minutes and then the third constraint will be about tubing and by now you should know how to write that that will be 12 x1 plus 16 x2 less than or equal to 2880 and again that is feet of tubing this is feet of tubing that we will use and it should not be more than 2880 which is feet of tubing available so again I'll say here feet of tubing so notice these constraints all three of them are resource constraints and therefore they have a very similar structure or actually the same structure all of them say on the left hand side units used and on the right hand side units available uh, okay what we what we still need to write is the last last uh, special types of constraints we need to put bounds on variables in this case if you if you if you don't write anything else what uh, what can happen is that x1 can take any real numbers any real number values so they can be positive zero or negative and in this context negative number does not make sense so we would like to say um, x1 is greater than or equal to zero and we should say also x2 is greater than or equal to zero right um, actually some of you may say well there is one more constraint we should put we should put that x1 and x2 should also be integer numbers not just zero or more but integer numbers they cannot be fractional numbers well at the moment we will ignore this restriction but that's a correct restriction if you're thinking about it but we're going to ignore it we'll discuss it later on in a future chapter so as it is this model is a linear programming model because it has a one objective and a number of constraints and all those objective and constraint functions are linear functions they are coefficient times variable plus coefficient times another variable and, and therefore we call this model a linear programming model and you can solve it using certain um, methods which will be discussed later on 
Thank you.